Hey, social media folks, Chuck and Bob here on Facebook and Twitter. And we are greeting you on social media because we've got a lot to talk about in this high school football weekend. A big weekend as we've already passed the one third mark of the season. Now coming up on week four and we looked around the area, saw a lot of games worth talking about. I know you people down in Stark County are awfully excited for the game coming up Friday night at Liberty Field. The two county rivals, Knox and North Judson, Russ Radke returning to Liberty Field for the first time since he coached North Judson back in 1986. But he's doing it as the head coach at Knox. Does he get cheered or booed? Well, I think you're probably going to get a little bit of both depending <laughs> on what side of the field you're on. But uh, Russ is uh, really excited about being back there at Knox. We had a chance to work with him a couple of weeks ago. And he's got those guys playing good football. And uh, Zach Rose is a quality quarterback for Knox. North Judson, though, a 1A school, off to a great start. and. Uh, they're going to be able to uh, give uh, Knox a pretty good run for their money. Well, yeah, you take a look at the numbers that North Judson has put up this year on offense. They're averaging almost 50 points a game right now. Granted, they have not played a 3A school like Knox, and I have to think that when you take a look at the Redskins and what they're able to do with that young man, Zach Rose, and his ability to make that offense work, they put a lot of points on the board last week against Culver. I think it's going to be a pretty high-scoring affair Friday night. It was a high-scoring affair last year when Knox rolled to a 35-7 win. A little closer this year, I think uh, North Judson getting a lot of respect. By the way, though, Rose is going to have uh, somebody to deal with on the other side that can put some points up because Trey Hampton, the quarterback at North Judson, very good dual-threat quarterback. So this one should be a fun one for the spectators who do get to go to watch. Uh, now, the guy that left Knox, John Hendricks, went home to his alma mater, Winnemac. They opened the season with a win last week, and LaVille finally gets to open the season this week. LaVille undefeated. Well, they <laughs> haven't played. They're 0-0, uh, zero zero, had a problem with the COVID-19, did the safe thing and uh, postponed some games. But uh, LaVille is a team that uh, going into their season opener, we thought they are going to be very good because of Aiden Doyle, their quarterback. He goes down with a knee injury. But they got an exciting freshman going to step in. Lucas Plummer takes over the reins of an offense. He's got a lot of speed around him, guys like Andrew Dill, and they've got some sophomores they're excited about. So it's a young team, but one with some potential. Take a look at Winnemac, and you have to focus on their quarterback, Russell Compton. As a sophomore last year, he threw for over 1,000 yards. Got the team off to a good start offensively last week. Granted, it was against North White. This will be a tougher challenge for Winnemac, but they are playing at Routabush Field. And Winnemac is a 1A school, and they're playing uh, LaVille, who's a quality 2A school. So it'll be interesting to see how the Lancers get out to uh, a start. I'm really intrigued by a matchup in the NIC North this week as New Prairie goes over to face Marion. Casey McKim, new coach at New Prairie. That offense really hasn't sparked yet, and they got housed by Andrean last week. That'll happen to a lot of people. Andrean's a very good football team. Now they have to go on the road again over to Atulski Field and take on this Marion team, Bob, that at 3-0 has looked as good as anybody in the area right now. Maddox Begonia Bright has a lot of weapons to use like Malcolm Anderson. Malcolm Anderson is a quality running back and uh, just he loves to go north and south, which any coach loves to see out of a running back. And they've got some uh, guys in the offensive and defensive line with pretty good size. Uh, Marion has a good, uh, very good offense. There's uh, Begonia Bright getting into the end zone on a long run. He can, uh, he can burn you in a hurry. Uh, the Marion Knights, so uh, the last time they played New Prairie, they got thumped 42 nothing. I think there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a chip on the Marion shoulder when they welcome the Cougars in Friday night. You know, the funny thing was, neither guy that's coaching right now at either one of those schools was the head coach in that game. So that'll be a little bit of a different story and. Don't forget, New Prairie has a D1 recruit on that offensive line, Hunter Whitenack. They've got some size themselves. We'll see what kind of attack they use to try to beat Marion because I would think the more you keep the ball out of the hands of that Marion offense, the better off you're going to One be. One of the things, too, about Marion, you know, you talk about the uh, explosive offense, but Michael Davidson, the head coach, is a, a stalwart and a defensive minded guy, and he's really proud of the way they're playing there as well. Do you think you'd want to be a Penn practice this week? Do you think that was a real pleasant place after they got their worst defeat at home since 1971? I don't think they're going to be a really happy group going down to Kendallville on Friday night to face 
the number two team in class 4A, a 3 and 0 East Noble squad. Granted, I think Penn's schedule has been as tough as anybody's in the state so far this year. They have played all comers and they've got a quarterback and Ron Paulus who loves to toss the ball around and can be effective doing that. Obviously, they gave up 52 to Cathedral. They've got to shore up some things on the defensive side. Of the yeah, ball. they really do. You know, the uniforms are black and gold. They need to come out of that game with a lot of blue, black and blue marks because they got to really go after East Noble, a very prolific team as well. They're 3-0 and on the season. And uh, Luke Amstutz is a veteran coach with a lot, of, uh, a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. Knights like to run the ball. That might be difficult to do against this Penn defense. I think the other thing to keep an eye on in this game is the fact that, you know, East Noble nearly got beaten by Northwood. They got out of Jim Andrews Field with a one-point win. Is Northwood as good as Penn? I don't think a lot of people are going to go out on that limb. So if Penn goes down there, has a solid game plan, and plays like they're capable of playing, they could come out with a win. But it's certainly no gimme taking on the number two team in 4A. No, when you look at the Sagan ratings, it's about a four-point difference in this one. Even though Penn is off to a tough start, people still respect the program. They know that Corey Oman and the Kingsman uh, making progress as the season goes along, and uh, they'll, be, uh, they'll be a formidable foe in the uh, tournament. You sit there and you talk about undefeated teams in the area, and the, and the ranked teams certainly get your attention. Teams like Elkhart and Marion and Northridge, and we talked about North Judson. Do you know Triton's 2-0? The Triton Trojans down there at Bourbon, they're 2-0. They go to Bremen on Friday night. Now, I'll grant you Triton had a narrow win over Caston. Two-point win last Friday night. But can't take away their 2-0. You can't take away the fact that Hunter McIntyre is averaging about 135 yards a game on the ground. But you go to Bremen. We talked about Penn not being in a real happy mood. They're not happy at Dumbuggy Field this week after what Marion did to them. Yeah, Marion thumped them pretty good, but this is a Bremen team that has a number of skill players. We were looking forward to that Laville Bremen mm -hmm. game to start the season to get canceled. But uh, Bremen's one of those schools, and you know, when you when you look at the uh, uh, roster and the fact that Bremen is uh, a team that uh, is coming off a tough loss. If they didn't get hurt, if they didn't get banged up, they're going to be fine as the season goes along. Well, Blake Dingus has been running the ball really well. They've got a veteran quarterback in Ethan Nunemaker, his second year as a starter, and they're playing at home, and there's a lot of reasons to like Bremen in this game against Triton. By the way, Don Bungie will be at the game. I'm, I'm sure the 97-year-old already has his seat picked out. We hope he does. And then you've got a game in the Northern Lakes Conference between Wallace and Concord. Bob, I look at the NLC as a game of survivor. Okay, you're not going to be able to survive with two losses in that conference, and both of these teams each have one. I will grant you the Warriors have been playing better, but when you look at Concord and the weapons that they have around them, especially Jack Darcy having a Great start to the year with 14 catches already in two games, and guys like Amari and Moore that are available as well. Zavin Koltukian's been running all over the field, making 27 tackles in the first two games. But the question about Concord is just how good are they this year? Well, they're going to get a good test from Wallace, and I'm excited to see Wallace playing better. And uh, yeah. it's been a little quiet over there uh, for the last few years uh, with basketball and football. But they're, uh, they're making some strides. They come into the game 2-1, and one, and uh, they were shut out by Northridge. So they've had a, a little bit of a lesson as well. But uh, I think this is going to be a good one. I would expect that Concord playing at the Jake is going to be an advantage for them. And John Rudabuck's team has only given up 20 points all season, all 20 of them to Northridge. So be interesting to keep an eye on that one. And speaking of the NLC, they have a new member for the first time since 1999. The Mishawaka Cavemen have joined the NLC and they'll make their debut in the conference on TV 46 tomorrow night down at Warsaw. And oh, there's a couple of storylines in this game because you see the Warsaw coach is Bart Curtis and he used to be the Mishawaka coach. And a guy that he hired at Mishawaka is a fellow by the name of Keith Kinder and he's now the Mishawaka coach. So storylines are plenty in this one. And by the way, Bob, they run the exact same offense. And they run the ball uh, prolifically. They throw maybe three or four passes a game. If they're, uh, if they're uh, opening up, they'll throw a few passes. But this one should be over, what, about an hour and 15 minutes. And the thing is, it's a mirror. I mean, they run the same plays. They run the same offense. One of the storylines here, too, you mentioned about Bart Curtis hiring Keith Kinder. 
One of, one of the things I really love that's come out this uh, week in the last 10 days or so is how much love and respect they have for each other. This is going to be a special night. They're really good buddies. Normally they talk to each other about three times a week, haven't discussed anything this week. They both want to beat each other, but both love one another. And so it's going to be fascinating to see how this one unfolds. But it's not Bart versus Keith. It's Warsaw versus Mishawaka. It's really on the players and how well the players execute on Friday night. And that's part of what makes it fun. That's why we're going to be there live on the Tube of View, the Book of Faces, and the IHSA Champions Network right around 645. And then, of course, you can see it the old-fashioned way on TV 46 Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Mishawaka, by the way, has uh, out, been outscored 79-71 in two games. Their two losses. Now, when you think about it, you say, well, they're not very good defensively. No, they played two of the most prolific offenses in town. And they had some young people on that defense to start the season. And we were at practice this week, and they're pretty impressive with the attitude and the work ethic that's going on at the Keith Kinder. Yeah, there's no shame in losing to teams like Elkhart and Marion if you're Mishawaka. And I think that week off last week might have done them some good, too. Gives them two weeks to prepare for what they're going to see on Friday night. We hope we'll be seeing you watching the game on Friday night as well. For my partner, Bob Nagel, it's Chuck Freeby. Thanks for joining us here on social media.